watching Let's Chat. We're continuing our discussion this morning with the voice of the Vols, Mr. Bob Kessling, and we've been talking about the uh, sad passing of Coach Johnny Majors yesterday morning at the age of 85. Bob, a few more questions about Johnny. Number one, yeah. tell me what his contemporaries in the college football coaching community thought about him. Well, when you win a national championship and you win conference championships, that automatically gets you up at a different level from uh, some of the other coaches, uh, they all liked him. You know, it's a, one of the amazing things about Coach Majors, uh, there are, there, there's a differing in number, but it's either 33 or 34 of his former assistants went on to be head coaches, like, uh, you know, Jackie Sherrill and Jimmy Johnson and Philip Fulmer, David Cutcliffe, uh, Lovey Smith, I mean, Ron Zook, right down the line. It's an impressive list. And there's also other assistants that are dotted all over the NFL that maybe weren't a head coach, but were coordinators. So, you know, his imprint on football, college football and in the NFL is pretty substantial. Uh, and I think those assistants would tell you it wasn't always fun working for Coach Majors, but he taught them sure. how to work hard and he taught them, taught them how to be a good head coach. And so they, he gets lavish praise from all these people and players that uh, – have uh, played for him or, or worked under him. There was, uh, there were a number of years where Coach Majors and I attended the uh, big barbecue over in Lynchburg together. And by luck, I happened to be seated at his table the first or second year that he and I were both there at the same time. And just listening to this guy talk, I learned a whole lot about college football, but I think I learned a whole lot more about life. And I think you yeah. can say that same thing about a lot of the folks who worked and coached under him. And it's really no surprise that he was not the easiest guy to play for or the easiest guy to work for. The good ones rarely are. Yeah, he was, he was very demanding about, and he was demanding on himself too. He expected you to be on time. Uh, you know, one thing he, he would always uh, do, if he sent you a, a RSVP letter about a function or a dinner or a gathering, that you're invited to, he expected you to answer that RSVP. And so to this day, when I get one, I make sure that I promptly respond to it because of Coach Majors. And if you didn't, he would call you. He didn't care necessarily that you're coming to the event. He was just upset because you didn't respond to the RSVP. He didn't think that was good right. manners. And he demanded that you do those little, th the little things is what made him such a good coach and such a good person. You know, he was well-read. Uh, he knew a little bit about everything. He was well-traveled. He went all over the world, he and Mary Lynn. Uh, so if you talk about England or France or Italy, he would have a story, and he would he had been there. So he was a very well-rounded, uh, very well-read, and a, just a very interesting guy to sit down and talk to. Is there a certain story that sticks out in your mind about you, Bob Kessling, and Coach Johnny Majors. Now you can tell, we know there's a whole lot we probably <laughs> couldn't go into here, but is there a favorite one of yours that you'll be telling your children and your grandchildren in years to come? You know, I remember one time I was, uh, I was working in Channel 10 and uh, uh, there was a, Tennessee was getting ready to go to the Liberty Bowl and they passed out the, and then I don't know what year that was, I know they played Minnesota, but they had passed out the invitation and Tennessee was five and five at the time and so they had one game left left to play so they could be going to the liberty ball if they lost to vanderbilt at the end of the season they could be five and six going to play uh in a bowl game and so i asked him in uh in the press conference on tuesday i said well coach majors are you concerned about if you lose this game you'll have a losing record going to the bowl game there in memphis and he goes looks at everybody there he goes but primarily at me and he goes you know in bulgaria romania they might tell you you gotta go here, you don't have to go. You don't have to buy a ticket. He said, I have been to a party that I wasn't invited to, at least not recently. He right. said, you can buy a ticket and come or don't come. But we're going if we're, since we're invited. We had uh, just, uh, it, it was hysterical. But that's the way it was. We had some sound last night from Coach Jeremy Pruitt about Coach Majors. They were at an event together, and Major snapped his finger and said, come here, come here. Just stared into Jeremy Pruitt's eyes for about 10 seconds and said, 
That's all I needed. Just wanted to see what you were all about. Bob, you are graciously going to rejoin us tomorrow as we kick off the weekend right here. And I want to thank you for your time this morning. Look forward to sharing some more time with you tomorrow morning, starting at 10 on Let's Chat. Great. Thanks, Jim.